What's good with YouTube? Y'all, we know Big Flocker with the convict's perspective, and I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit the bell notification for future fire content. And as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, man, we're going to be talking about the others who in prison can consist of a lot of different groups. It could be Asian, Pacific Islanders, um, Middle Easterns, Natives, whatever. A lot of times the native cars are going to have their own car, which would be, you know, American Indians, Native Americans. But the others in general is usually everyone else that doesn't fall under the black groups, the white groups, or the Rasa groups. And a lot of times they unified together. Now, some of them come from different walks of life. Some of them come from different gangs in the streets, crip, blood, whatever it may be. And a lot of times, from my understanding, what I've always seen is they usually drop whatever they were banging on the streets and they come together as one. Now, Sometimes I've heard some podcasters, some people think acted like the, the other cars are soft and weak. That's not true at all, man. The other cars have always been about their business for a lot of different reasons. For one, their numbers are low. So I could always relate to how the others felt because it was the same thing with North Daniels. Our numbers were always low. Okay. Number two, right? The same struggles that they you know what I'm saying, went through as far as to establish certain yards where other groups did not want to give them, at times, their phones, their this, their this and that, right? They fought for everything that they had on a lot of these yards, and they didn't take shit from nobody. And they they were always one that was always promoting a lot of unity within their people, that you had to fucking respect them, man. Like me, I respected the others to, to the T, okay? Not because of... uh you know, my own personal experiences with the struggles that I went through as, as a North Daniel. But I, I used to be in, like I said, on the streets, the county jail and whatnot, and have a lot of interactions with Vietnamese, Filipinos and whatnot. So I'd always had good reports. Samoans, everybody, man. It was always solid, you know. And I used to trip that they program almost like homeboys without having certain type of policies and procedures. They promote a lot of unity. They promote a lot of respect. And they're real quick to to discipline their own without abusing their own people. That's I will say this. There's a lot of care. There's a lot of respect. And there's a lot of, a lot of love within the, the other car. You know, I remember being with um, me and Chuko, right? We're in Little Max. And we had an Asian Vietnamese named D from somewhere out down south in Anaheim. He was on a RICO act, man, with a bunch of hot ones, right? And he had yet to be really doing any time, right? But D started programming with us in a similar fashion. Like, we do machine at a certain time, we'd work out. Say if Chuko didn't want to work out, me and D would be working out, you know, and joke around. And there's a lot of good people I've met through the other car that have a good sense of direction and, you know, good qualities about life, you know, and can think almost identical as far as in ideals about things with the system and whatnot, you know. And, I, you know, I understand that they have their own struggle that they're going through, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, They've always fought for their right to exist behind the, behind the walls in any place and have planted their flag. And in that they have not bowed down to anybody. So you always got to fucking respect that. You know, so I've always held them in high regard because of the, the limited amount of numbers they had on certain prison yards, yet they still held their own. And they weren't going to bow down to nobody, but they still conducted themselves right. See, a lot of times... From a distance, the issues I seen them when they got into it with other cars was always some car trying to punk them or, or always some car thinking that they could take advantage of them because they had low numbers. And every time the other cars will never will never fucking back down and will always stand up for their fucking rights that you have to respect. The thing that used to trip me out the most is you have almost every car or different races and you know ethnicities all in one and they're somehow able to make it work. You could have a crip or a blood or whatever they may be, and they're still able to exist, they're still able to get along and find a way to program. You know, I always thought that was fucking kind of amazing that sometimes with not even knowing each other, knowing anything, they would still be able to fall on file and do what they needed to do. Now, others, for some reason, if you treat them right, and they have a good experience for whatever your car is, it's going to always pay in the long run, man, because the others, because they're really not affiliated with any gangs, right? In, in the eyes of CDC, um, they're always put in positions of good jobs, you know, laundry or canteen or some kitchen jobs or 
some trades. Therefore, they have access to a lot of different things that could be valuable to a lot of different groups. Now, if you treat them right, they're not going to forget. They're always going to remember what your people did for them. And a lot of times they're going to return those favors, whether it be getting communications from one building to the next, getting some that they may need, or just even the little luxuries that sometimes we obtain in prison. You know, that's one thing about the others. They don't forget the people that treated them right, but they also don't forget the people that treated them wrong. And a lot of times there's been animosities and issues that have, were created in the county jail that even though they're, they're fucking dropped in prison, people don't forget. Like a lot of fucked up shit used to happen in Los Angeles County Jail, you know, that was fucking worse than most level fours at times, you know. And so a lot of times other cars would not forget. What's that one cat that has a channel? That he's the other. There's two of them. There's one that's a Samoan right there in, in I think, Vallejo, right? And then there's Par Young, right? Dude, their stories are great, man. They they paint a picture perfectly of how it is for another in prison, man, and what they have to go through. And they keep it 100, man. So those are channels. When I tap in, I'm like, you know what? They've been places. They've been on those yards because everything they say is 100% accurate. You know, warfare strategies at times could be the hardest thing when it comes to being another because... Say they're on the yard and there's only like eight or ten of them and they get into it with the Sudanos who have maybe 200, 300 people in that yard. They could pretty much send enough people to fucking take them off that yard. But I'm going to tell you this. When you try to have some issues with the others and you go at it with them, man, you better bring everything you've got as far as if you're a soldier. Because one-on-one, -on -one, but that the next soldier that you're going against, those dudes understand that they're outnumbered. They, outstand, they understand that there's a lot of people that want them to have to prove themselves in the yard. They understand that people look at them as being a small collective. So when you come at them, they've established themselves as being a faction that could fucking get it on with anybody because of those times when they've been rushed by 20, 30, by 20, 30 dudes, man, like in Salinas Valley and, you know, High Desert and, and other locations of, of riots that have happened, right, where they stood up. And stood on their own and fucking did some serious damage. I mean, they went out with the homeboys in Salinas Valley one time and got pretty much butchered up. You know what I mean? They butchered up the homeboys back in the 90s. Same thing in the, in the late 90s in High Desert. And that was over because the dude, the others knew that a lot of those, those weren't even North Angeles they were going at it with. Those were actually, in, how do you say it? They were fucking North Angeles that did not fall under the NF at that time. Because the others knew that. They knew what time it was. that the, These Norders were considered no good. So they've gone at it with almost anybody. And they've left their mark with almost anybody. To where in the beginning, you know, how you say it, it was, uh, like I said, it was difficult. Their numbers weren't on those yards at all. Eventually, they slowly started to establish themselves. And as they were tested, they proved themselves worthy against anybody. Each facility, their relationship may be different with different groups. They may get along with this group more at this prison or, or whatnot. They may be more distanced from everybody at this prison. Like I said, it depends where you're at. And it depends who's there. Because you've got, like I said, Cambodians. you got Vietnamese. you got Samoans. you got Punjabis. you got all these different groups, man. And they're all individuals that are in prison doing their time. Therefore, they want whatever the next man has coming. They want to be given the same respect the same opportunity, the same social status of equality, basically. So a lot of times when I look at the other movement, the other cause, it really reminds me and pretty much mirrors that of the North Daniel cause. They do a lot of the same things. Like I said, they have unity. You know what I'm saying? They have spreads where they're all getting together spreading. You know, they have their little meetings and they communicate with each other real well. You know, and it's, it's kind of like an awesome thing to see when you see unity within the people. You know, it kind of reminds me of the things that we used to have to do it from time to time. As a North Daniel on those yards, when we were outnumbered, we still showed unity. We would spread, have activities, card games, and whatnot. They almost look like North Daniels without being North Daniels, if, if that makes any sense. Low in numbers. They do the same security type of things, you know, post up for the showers and whatnot. They make sure they're up during the hours, and they stick together. Now, that's the same thing of a North Daniel in the 90s when we were spread throughout California and a lot of times on these yards, we weren't that thick or deep. It was just like how the others are. Now, my understanding that the other car came about probably about like I think the 80s, really. I think before that, they were more, you know, individuals. There wasn't really an other car, but slowly in the 80s, from my understanding, was because they started to see other groups click up. 
that they found the reason for them to click up, you know what I'm saying, in order to secure themselves. It's all the same type of patterns in any institution, you know, and that, therefore you had the group, the others, you know. Plus, administration was labeled them as others. If you weren't, you know, white, northern Mexican, southern Mexican, or black, crippled, whatever it may be, then you were another. You know what I'm saying? It made it easy for them to classify it and made it easier for them to sell people up. Does the other car always have, you know, the unity and respect like, like I'm talking about? No. There's been times where I've seen other cars have splits because one group feels like the other group in the other car is, is pretty much dominating what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, something happens. But for the most part, they all get along, man. Like I said, for the most part, they're respectful. And depending on what level you're on, they're going to meet anybody's strength. Anybody that wants to bring it to them, they're going to meet them with equal force. You know, that's just the truth of it, man. Um, you know, in, in general, I have respect for almost every group that's in prison, right? You're going to have those that are soft. You're going to have those that are weak, you know, in any of the groups. You know, but then you're going to have those groups, right, that they can't afford to be soft. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. They need every manpower for themselves. And I think that's what makes them rise to the fucking occasion every time. It's just like with North Downs at times, right? Being outnumbered and being put on those yards, we'd rise to the occasion. Just like with the Bulldogs now. They've been fucking transferred all over. They've rose to the occasion, you know? And I really think that when you have a fair and just cause in which you believe in your people, you're always going to be victorious no matter what you meet. With that said, man, a little bit about the others, man. Like I said, you have the Asians. You have, like, Cambodians. They could be Crips, Bloods. No matter where they're from, they're rocking the other car. You know what I'm saying? None of that applies within their car. What applies is they're all together. With that said, it's your boy Flacco, Convict's Perspective. I'm gone.